It is not ideal. It can't be ideal to have a distressing environment where you're having people that are dissenting. Is it less ideal than having no fans inside a stadium for the last 15 months? Is that more ideal? No, that's not not more ideal either. And you've managed to overcome that obstacle by being very successful in winning a games away from, from Old Trafford, where you've been one of the most successful teams away from Old Trafford. So whatever it is, managers will find an excuse. The bigger problem for Man United in that situation was they had to play a certain amount of games in a week because of the ridiculous nature of the situation where one game was abandoned because people couldn't demonstrate in a way that was appropriate. Yeah, it was postponed and then yeah. play, played last week. Uh, the bottom line is, Simon, the way I read it is they're going to protest. There's no way oh, yeah, that... They're, no, they're, they're, guarantees. They're guaranteed. They're going to go there tonight. Oh, guarantees. Outside and inside, they will protest. And, and right. United are, are, are right to be sensitive about or this. Or to mark their card and to let them know that it won't be tolerated. If they take it beyond the bounds, listen, you can get you can get in people's faces and you can mark, advance you, you know. If, there's two there's two scores of protests, isn't there? There's the Malcolm X protest and there's the Martin Luther King one. And it depends which way you want, you think is the better way to go. Exactly. Malcolm X got shot, so you know you can want, work with that one backwards to some sure, extent. Sure, But by the same token, you look at it and say, you don't don't have a right to protest in the way that you did the first time round with a segment, a minority of the fans behaving how they did. If you want to go into your football club and pay your money and stand inside a stadium after the first time being in there for a very long time and you want to turn your back or you want to shout and scream or you want to be dissenting against the owners, I guess that's your choice. That's your choice as a fan. You have that right. Man City fans, once upon a time, were turning their back on the UEFA Champions League anthem, anthem weren't they? Because they weren't happy yeah. with UEFA and the way they yeah. were treated. Yeah. It's a fan's right to do as they want. Do I think it's the way to go? Probably not. But the United fans will say, well, you don't know what we have to endure and what we've had to endure with our football club being taken to pieces by rapacious owners. Right? I understand all that. Is it constructive? Will it achieve anything? Will it give people like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer an excuse if they get beat again? Probably I don't think it'll get beat by Fulham because I think Fulham are done. But I just, you know, of course they're going to protest Jim. They've got inside the stadium. They're going to have the cameras on them. They're not going to miss this opportunity. And there's a part of me that hopes that if they do step across the line, that it becomes vilified the way it should be. Oh, yeah, definitely. The people that come out, the people that called it on. Yeah. People like Gary Neville that called some of this on, if they behave badly inside this stadium and they step across the line, I hope the same people that called this sort of stuff on are going to turn around and say, whoa, enough now. That's not anyone's entitlement. I don't care well, you've exactly. had 16 years in a build-up to this. Exactly. Because, I mean, the, the, the moron that I showed you in my phone the other day, I was sent some footage. Yeah, screaming at Jamie. Screaming, Jamie, screaming at, at Graham, uh, Jimmy yeah. Carragher yeah. and Graham Soonis. I hope he's not had the privilege of being back inside well, you, the stadium tonight well, you, but people like that might well, well be you'd like to think if you've done it on a ballot like right, that you know who's coming in and it isn't more on number one that was effing and jeffing at everybody that stood in front of him while shaking gary neville's hand you never know Look, i'm not trying to make neville the center of things but he's put himself front and center at times so you do have to say ultimately i don't think they'll behave badly i think they'll take the opportunity you think to, it could be a peaceful protest oh i think it will be inside yeah i think it will be because i think of what well, Whatever they choose to do, whether it's constant shouting and ch- chanting against the board, whether it's turning their back on the on the on the on the players for one particular point of the game, or whatever it is, whether it's posters, banners, and whatever, yeah. you know, they all make their point of view in whichever way they seem. Are they if, fortunate to be in there after what happened the last time or d- time before last? Um, yeah, but they are, but they're not because I, I made the argument last week about the fact you cannot allow minority to affect the majority so those 200 fans or however many it was that ran on the pitch shouldn't stop 10,000 fans from going into Old Trafford is it 10,000 fans? Yeah shouldn't stop 10,000 fans 9,800 of them might have had a decent view and wanted to protest but protest within the bounds of what's acceptable so no they're not lucky to be in there they're only lucky if we're going to turn around and say that we're a society that consequences everybody for small people's behaviour I'll ask you the same just to finish with tonight and we'll watch it of course we'll watch it All eyes will be on Old Trafford tonight, outside and in. I'll ask you the same question again, Simon, that I asked you last week. And I wonder if you'll give me the same answer. Because a few days have elapsed since, and we've heard the Glazers make a statement. Will the Glazers still be in charge of the club this time in a year? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, no doubt. No doubt. I, I, listen, unless somebody's going to come out of the ether and write them a big bag of money, a significant bag of money, and do what Daniel Eek's doing, which is looking like he's going to do something and then probably disappearing back into the ether, I don't see it happening. I know there's a school of thought. I know that people are saying these American owners really underestimated it and they really don't like the temperature. But these guys are about money and money will get them out. So if someone, ask me again, someone walks across their eyes and offers them five billion quid, will they still own Man United? No. But who's going to come along and write checks like that? Jim White.
and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.